All right, on the phone with us right now, this guy's just a toddler when that happened. Mark Cuban is the owner of the Dallas Mavericks. You know, Mark is famous for having gotten out of the markets just right before the whole uh, thing collapsed. Um, he sold his company at the time to Yahoo Broadcast.com for $5.7 billion. I think it was early 2000, right, Mark? Yeah, um, it, well, actually, April of 2000, yeah. Well, it's perfectly timed. Mm -hmm. Everyone says that uh, we're set up for another event like that, another collapse like that. Now, the NASDAQ, of course, is still a long way from the levels that it was back then, even now. But the market itself is kind of heady, they say. Do you buy that? Not really, because there's just too much money going around. Everybody's been trained to put money into mutual funds, to find outlets for um, their savings other than banks. And as long as all these funds have to invest their money to compete with other funds, you know, I don't, I don't see there being a big fall off unless there's some sort of trigger. And we haven't seen that trigger yet. So let me get your take on, on the, the people now who say that we, we might have stabilized, but they're getting a little cocky. Well, Tuesday was just an aberration then. What do you say? Well, everybody's a genius in a bull market, and we've, and we've been going up for so long. No one has a reason to doubt their ability to pick stocks or to pick indexes or to pick places to put money. And when that happens, that's usually your first indication that something bad is around the corner. And I think you saw the first evidence of that it's a possibility um, with the big sell-off the other day, that there were a lot of funds that because they were so heavily leveraged, that you know, we heard rumors that you know yeah. this fund or that fund might might be done. Yeah, Mark, could I, I don't want to interrupt you. And guys sure. in the control, you could help me take the banner down. I want to show something on this big board that's interesting, and that is that second column, the up volume versus down volume, uh, uh, decidedly in favor of down volume. So even on a soft day, what that tells me, Mark, is that the sentiment is still fairly negative. Uh, well, think, what do you make of that? I think people, I think, as I said, the funds aren't with individuals anymore. I think you've got to be crazy as an individual to go up against all the pros in the market. And so the funds are with, the money is with the funds, and funds have to compete. And so they're really trying to protect themselves against the downside and really trying to make sure they have some cash in case there's a bounce. Well, let, let me ask you then, if you're uh -huh. an average investor, you're anything but, but I mean, an average investor is coming in, this is a great buying opportunity, I'm going to buy a mutual fund or something pegged to the Dow or the S&P 500 uh, today, what uh -huh. would you tell them? Put your, get your 5% from CDs. Really? So you have, no, you have no confidence in this market right now? What, I've, not in terms of going up from here, no. Wow. I mean, just because if you're an average investor, you know, you've got to be ready for the kids being sick, the kids going to college. There's so many things that change your life that the professional investors don't have to worry about. And so if, you know, to try to get that average 7 to 8%, that's only a 3 three percent more i think you know it's much better off for the average investor to to just say you know what get a good night's sleep rather than trying to grovel for that extra three percent because it's so hard to compete with the professionals all right mark cuban very good having you i do want to get now some reaction from our market pros including charles payne he is at the american stock exchange right now we've got uh peter schiff also joining us from nasdaq Joe Battapaglia in Philadelphia, and last but not least, Michelle Girard in Greenwich, Connecticut. Michelle, what did you make of what Mark was saying? There's a billionaire, pretty proven uh, with money himself, who's saying, you know what? Not get out of Dodge, but, but go slow and Dodge. Well, you know, the market right now is, I think, reassessing, you know, risk. You see it in the bond market and you see it in the stock market. For a long period of time, I think people were perhaps not pricing risk appropriately. For example, uh, the additional yield you got for buying a corporate bond versus a very high quality treasury bond has been very narrow, even though there were times when people were very worried about a recession. So right now, I think mm. the market is reassessing risk. I, I still think the underlying fundamentals of the economy are good, but I think that there's probably an appropriate amount of readjustment that's that's taking place. All right. Now, if that is the case, Charles Payne, that could be a short-term bearish indicator. In other words, people are reassessing whether it's worth being in this puppet, right? Yeah, well, I know, but those conditions have been in place for a while. You know, I want to go back to the Mark Cuban situation. I find it disingenuous that a guy can make a billion dollars in the stock market and tell other people not to play it. You know, these are the type of things that scared the average person from really making money in the market. These are small-time blips, whether you take a one-year chart, five-year chart, and certainly a 20-year chart, and I think that this is going to end up being a great buying opportunity. But, but Charles, like his history year. proves that there is such a thing as good timing and Bad timing. Had he sold his company, whether Yahoo was interested in buying it, just a few months later, 
he wouldn't have gotten five point seven billion. You're, you're absolutely right. He got out. He made a lot of money in the right. stock market, though. And the point is that the average person watching this show should not be afraid of the stock market. And I think that's the message that you get when you pick up a newspaper, whether it was yesterday or tomorrow morning. All right. Well, you should be stop looking at the wrong newspapers. <laughs> uh, Joe Benapagli, what do you make of that? That the perception <clears throat> right now with this volatile week, it, people are ants, are they? Well, they are and they should be because we have significant issues unfolding in the real economy that would suggest the market could be vulnerable. For example, corporate profits have peaked, they're on a decline. We're all figuring the economy is slowing. Some say 2%, but it could be worse than that. And we have what I would call trillion dollar tornadoes going on. Tornadoes are also affecting financial markets as well. Let me name a couple. The subprime market is over a trillion dollars. 20% of it has gone bad. There's a trillion dollars of adjustable rate mortgages in 2007 that are all going to be adjusted up, which will affect the consumer. There's a trillion dollars of investment internationally that's now finding out that there's risk in emerging markets. Are you bearish? So a blow are you up bearish? in China one day, are you a bearish? blow up with Japan on another where liquidity is being drained yeah. is suggestive that the environment for now is a treacherous one so that an investor who has a long-term point of view will not necessarily run in to buy into this nor sell but will wait for a better opportunity because I think uh, you have right. more weakness. Maybe you can't hear it. He sounds bearish to me, Peter Schiff. Yeah. Are you? Are you sure that's Joe Batapagli? I know. He's I was sounding surprised. A little bit like I, me. I, I was surprised. Maybe the last bull and bear debate we had, some of the guys said, sunk in. You know, uh, Mark Cuban is looking for a trigger, and I think our foreign creditors are about to pull it. You know, uh, to think that the American economy is sound, I think, is, is, is a stretch, to put it mildly. It's not sound. All we've been doing over the past several years is borrowing a lot of money from foreign creditors to pay for the import of consumer goods manufactured abroad. Peter, are you looking at debt. the same economy I am, the one that's producing 150,000 jobs a month, the we're, one that has still stable low interest no, rates, the one that shows retail sales strong? No, you're not looking at it properly. We're not producing anything but debt. We're borrowing money from abroad. That's the problem. You know, we're dependent All right, we've been on doing that. We've been doing that for nearly 30 years, right? Yeah, I know, and it's been a problem for 30 years. But now, in the last five or six years, it's gotten to such an point. So, what happens, Peter? What on. are you saying is going to happen? Well, I think I think this is just the beginning for the stock market. But it's not just the stock market that's going to go down. It's what's the, entire, the beginning? Tell me well, what's the beginning. What's going to happen? I think we have a much bigger decline ahead. I How big a decline? Substantial. You what know? is substantial? For well, we might sake. take out the lows from 2002. Okay. And All I right, Charles, you just heard that. We take out the lows from 2002. That would be yeah. a multi-thousand point hit. Yeah, it would be, and I, and I totally disagree with Peter. Uh, you know, listen, as you mentioned, Neil, a lot of these things have been in place for a long time. There are a lot of people out there, like the guy who has a sign, the world's coming to an end. Every time it looks like they're right, they get on the soapbox. But i got to tell you, history has proven that the market is a self-correcting mechanism. And it will. there are problems. Obviously, there are problems. So is this a correction? I think it's a small correction, very similar to last year's. Obviously, a lot sharper, a lot more emotional. Okay. But sooner or later, we're going to find a bottom. Michelle, very quickly, is the Federal Reserve looking at all of this and saying, you know, we got some volatile markets here. Wait, wait. Uh, the next move we make is to cut interest rates. You know, if they have to, they will. But I think the Fed is looking at the market saying there's a lot of volatility, but you know what? Markets are continuing to work. They are okay. not seizing up. This is not a crisis. It's not something I, feel, I think at this point the Fed feels it needs to react to. All right, guys, I want to thank you all. I do want to switch now to what's happening in the uh, southeast portion of our country, six states.